Hello everyone, I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Bob Tucker, Managing Director of National Trading House. He will be talking to you today about the execution plan. This is the how-to part of your business plan and uh, hopefully uh, you will get something out of it and you will take it away and put it into your, incorporate it into your actual business plan. Now, you heard the word the. It's so obvious. And you can have the most brilliant of strategies, you can have the most brilliant of ideas, you can have the most wonderful, life-changing innovation. If you don't act it, if you don't execute it properly, it's a waste of time. Okay? And you'll come across a lot of ideas. If you go into the history of innovation and history of management, history of business, you'll see brilliant ideas badly executed. Okay? And there's somebody else who comes back and takes that idea and executes it better than the rest of them. So it's always the execution. It's always the main thing about, about business and about, a, about an enterprise or about any, any uh, corporation. Okay, so what is it that we do? I'm going to talk about today, and let's just go through quickly what I'm going to talk about. Uh, what goes into this plan, the execution part of it? Uh, what is the mat? And this is a terminology which I've used from a very good book. I recommend that you read that book if you can, and I'll talk about it during the presentation. And what's the art of the execution? I've taken material from a couple of sources. I'm going to share the sources with you because that's, that's going to be useful for you guys in future. Okay. Now, this is what Edison said a long time ago. And we all, unfortunately, try to focus on 1% of it. The brilliant idea, the big life-changing thing, it's going to save the world, apparently. Okay, we entrepreneurs, or wannabe entrepreneurs, always have this focus on the big thing. This is it. This is the next Steve Jobs. This is the next Mac. This is the next uh, Amazon. It's the idea. Okay. Unfortunately, that's not it. An idea at the end of the day is what? It's still an idea. It's either on paper or it's like me, it's still in your mind if it's not penned up, or it's on your brilliant PowerPoint presentation. But bottom line, it is still an idea. Somebody's got to go out and do it. Somebody needs to go out and execute it. And the problem with entrepreneurs, and this is, this, is what, this is what evidence shows is that we focus way too much time on that idea, way too much time on thinking of brilliant things. But we don't spend enough time on working out the details on how we're going to do that. That's the perspiration part. 99% of the time is that the backroom work, the hard work, the grind, as they call it. And this is what is important that you guys got to remember, that it's always about execution. It's, it's about a good idea, but how you execute it. All right? Now, if you don't execute it or you execute it poorly, it's a waste. So all the creativity which you have used, all that mind you applied to is gone. Okay? So that's the first thing you need to remember. And Edison wasn't wrong. What did he mean by that? Okay, and, and that, that, that takes it up to what I, I picked up from another source. That you have an imagination in your business plan. Obviously, you're imagining something, you're imagining a new idea, you're imagining something brilliant, life-changing, which will change, change not only your life, but the people who are using your products and services. But the trick here is to use that imagination and take it from imagination to impact. Okay, how will you make that impact? And you can only make impact when you do something with it, when you convert that into action. All right, now that is what it is. The perspiration part is the execution part. Rolling up your sleeves and doing it. And as an entrepreneur, most of the time, you have to do it. You don't have, you're not part of a big multinational, you don't have a team of people doing things for you, okay? So it's you who have to do it. It's, uh, or maybe you and one more person people around you, small team. That's what execution comes to. Now, business is exciting, business is fun, business entrepreneurs set up some more exciting, but they also can be boring. The day-to-day -day details have to be looked into. Sweat the details, as they say. Okay, you can't ignore them. And, you, and I heard this a lot of time. Oh, you know, but what? I'm a big picture guy. I'm this creative guy who thinks of these big ideas, and I'll let somebody else do this thing. Well, Steve Jobs worked in his garage, and he did things himself. So did Bill Gates. 
So did Jeff Bezos, Joe did any, you take any entrepreneur. They built up an organization afterwards. When they start, they did that themselves. Look at entrepreneurs here in Bahrain, those who started 50, 60, 70, 100 years ago. They did things themselves. They didn't have organizations back then. All right? So the day in and day out part of the business is critical, and you need to remember that. All right? So the execution plan is the how-to of your business plan. What are you going to do step by step, one thing at a time? You're going to tick those boxes. Have I done this? Have I done this? Have I done this? That's what it's all about. And let's see what that is all about. And it's a tool which you should use not once in a while. It's your blueprint. It's something which you should have with you all the time. And you need to check whether I have done that or not. Yes, I made this nice presentation. I had this great creative idea. Yes, I penned it. I wrote a plan. I even managed to convince people about it. But have I actually now doing all the backroom stuff? OK, that's it. So it's something which you need. And you need to let people know about it, the team you're working with. Because if you don't let them know, how are you, how are you going to translate that idea into action? So you need to communicate what your goal is to your team. All right, That's what you need to do it. The final component of this is, of course, timing. It's not endless. You need to do it. It's got to be time bound. So it's not that, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it sometimes. No, no. You know, you've, got to, you've got to put a date to it. You need to finalize it, and you can pin it down. Okay, So there has to be a deadline to it. Now, what do you think this is? This is what I call, or what Kawasaki calls, a mat. What's a mat? We all know what a mat is. Okay, See how those things are weaved? All the squares are formed there where you weave the, the rope. That's a what. And why do I use the mat? And this is a basic description of mat as with the dictionary. Now, if you see the last line of it, and I like that, keep the debris from scattering. And any new business, there will be debris. A lot of things fall off. They have to. It's a startup, it's a new business, a new venture. There have to be things falling across you. And a mat will collect that. Okay, it will help you from scattering everything, but it'll keep it together. So you need a mat. Now, what does the mat translate into? Milestones, assumptions, tasks. That is what your execution is all about. Milestone. What to do, when to do it, and who's going to do it. Now, with, with all the things you'll have as an entrepreneur, the one thing you need to keep in mind, that you are juggling with a lot of balls in the air. You can't do things in a linear form. I'll do this, take it off. I'll do that, I'll take it off. Now, that's something which you have been taught to do. Hey, plan your work. Do one thing at a time. Well, welcome to the world of an entrepreneur. You're going to be having a lot of balls in the air, ideas, creations, concepts, finance, working people, space, whatever. And you need to have them all juggling at the same time. You see the clown juggling those balls in the air? How he keeps three, four, five balls? Think about it as an entrepreneur. So you need to understand what the scope of your work is. What are you going to be doing as an entrepreneur and in your business plan? And then the other thing is assumptions. Now, what do you know about assumptions? When you assume something, it probably will go wrong. So a milestone helps you to test that. You test your assumptions, whether I made the right assumptions or not, and then you change them and rectify them. And when you start a business, you will have a lot of assumptions. Your business plan will have a lot of goals which you have to set. I have to achieve the following goals. And what is it that we need to do in those goals? We need to put them into a list. What's the most important one? And the next one, and the next one, and the next one. We need to give them a, a level of, in, a degree of importance. Prioritize them. Once you prioritize these, these become your milestone. That's it. So I need to do all these things. I need to have a checklist of these things, and they are your milestones. And they are the ones who will help you to find out what are the important progress you're making in your plan. As you keep on getting one milestone after the other, you realize whether you're on the road to success or something is not working. I need to change that. So let's have some more information on milestones. According to uh, 
Kawasaki and used to work for Apple. These are the seven milestones which any business would need, be it manufacturing, be it service, be it trading. And you cannot deviate from these. There will be some others, but there will be eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. They will not be in the top seven. These are the top seven in any startup, any enterprise, any business. Number one, your concept. Are you coming out with a new product or are you coming with a new service? Proved it. Where have you proved it? Is there empirical data that you proved it? Have you, have you tested on how many people? So where is that concept first? Have you run that concept through? Okay, design specs. Be it a service, you still need design. How are you going to get your service across to your people, to your customers? The prototype. Money. Where are you going to raise the money from? Friends, family, banks. It's not going to come from your own. Okay, and then be ready with a product which is testable. Yes, I can, share, I can ship it, I can give it, I can deliver it to a customer. And then am I ready to actually deliver to a customer? And the last one, break even. All businesses are meant for one purpose. What's that purpose? Make money. Make money, profit. Don't fool yourself. Yes, you will change your world. In the process, you'll make money. You will provide exceptional service, but you'll still make money. If you don't make money, work for charity. Work for charity. And don't, don't waste your time, seriously. If it's not making any profit for you, get out. Do everybody else a favor, and yourself. What comes before making money? And especially in a startup business? Break even. Break even. Especially your cash flow break even. And that goes into your financial part, I'm not talking about it. Okay, before you start making money, you need to break even with your cash flow. That's why these are the guys who were doing this in and out for so many years. Tap into their resources, into their experience. You can't change the seven things. There will be more, there will be not as priority as this. Some people said, hey, what about people? Hey, what about HR? What about operations? After this, use this. Now, one of the things which you have done about the, uh, in a business plan is mission statement. How many of you have a mission statement in your business plan? Raise your hands. Okay, tear it. Throw it away. <laughs> tear it. I don't think my, my dad, when he started the business, even knew what a mission statement was. I'm sorry to say that. I don't think any of our, of our people, who entrepreneurs who started this, knew what a mission statement was. But what you can do with a mission, instead of a mission statement, use this milestone. Okay? Do this exercise. Put in a mission statement, because it's part of your business plan, but try putting this as well. Take that thing and, and put it into a time-bound list for things you have to complete. You know what? You will realize that you'd rather go by this than by mission statement. What's the other thing you can replace the mission statement with? Mantra. The passion which you can repeat again and again and again, which is like a chant. So what else can you do about milestones? You miss, you miss one of them and you will, your organization will die. No doubt about it. Okay. Uh, as I told you, prioritize them, and of course, when you time them, it'll di drive everything else about your business. The moment you time them, they drive your business. This is what you need to do on, on that particular time. This is again feeds into your financial plan, because what those financial, what those missions, the milestones require, are the resources, and you put them in your financial plan. That comes to assume. That's the riskiest part of your business. What are the things you assume in your, in your business, when you start a business? We obviously work with certain standards, of certain assumptions, and these could be what? How big is the market? Okay, sales, return on investment, uh, technical payment cycle, where am I gonna get money from? 30 days, 60 days, 120 days, 200 days if you're in some, with some customers in Bahrain, two years, okay? And what happens to your cash flow when you say 60 days and it goes up to two years? Boom. That's your assumptions. 
So you need to make your assumptions and you need to be very sure on what, is, what are the assumptions you're making, especially in your plans. Because Murphy's Law, what do you tend to assume? Won't happen. Experience. What else can you talk about these assumptions? You need to monitor them minutely. Because any variation to that affects your whole business. So just see that whether you're on, on track on them. If you're not on track, rectify them. And on this point, I just like to deviate a bit and talk about entrepreneurship. I read, read a lot about it. And we always talk about saying, think about, let's make this perfect product and then launch it into the market. Well, they're saying, you know what? Throw that theory out of the window. Get a product, just launch it. What's, the, what's, get, what's gonna go, go wrong? It's not gonna happen, it's not right? Fine, we go back, go back to the drawing back and come back with a better product. But at least we are not, and the term here is, Paralysis by analysis. Spreadsheet over spreadsheet over spreadsheet. Design over design over design. Money spent, PowerPoint over PowerPoint over PowerPoint. But there's no product. Because we're still waiting for that magical, elusive, perfect product. Just get it and put it into the market. The market will teach you what's the right product. Yeah. It will be a cost. It will be a cost, yes. That's why I'm deviating. It is, it is uncharted water. They say sell, iterate, sell, iterate. You know what iterate is? Make it better and sell, iterate, and sell, iterate. It's a theory. And I feel that if you wait for the perfect product, you'll never have a perfect product because life is never black and white. Who teaches you the best about your business? The markets. The cost on the other end of not doing anything is also a cost. Okay, so fine line, debatable, yes, but the theory nowadays, Silicon Valley is the best example. And they just go out and I, they put it up in the market. Uh, link these assumptions to your seven milestones. It goes back to seven milestones. Link them up. And you'll see a lot of, lot, of, lot of things start making sense to you. As of course you reach them, you keep on always testing, you always test them, always test your assumptions, always monitor them because they will change. Reality is that they will change. And the story about, hey, the market is so big, I just want 1% of the market, be careful. Very dangerous. This 1% of the market gives you two things. First of all, it tells me what, you're only gonna go after 1%. So what happened to the 99%? And the 1% is never big enough. So when you make those assumptions, be careful on those assumptions. TAS, of course, is, 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 the more, is the most boring of the three. The day to day, getting up in the morning and doing the routine, my God, you know what? You need those things and you need to have a nitty gritty. Of, this is the nitty gritty of your business. These are the things where you roll up your sleeves and do the boring stuff, sweat the stuff. Really, really boring stuff. Like what? You know, it could be anything. These are the nuts and bolts of your business. Who's going to fix it? Who's going to look for the space? Who's going to look for the furniture? Can I afford it? Can I rent it? Can I buy second hand? Who's going to look at banking? Who's going to look at insurance? Who's going to look at legal facts? Who's going to look at contracts? Who's going to look at, uh, I don't know, name the day-to-day -day things which you have to do in business. But I, hey, look, this is not entrepreneurship. I'm a creative guy. I'm the big picture guy. Let somebody else do it. Is there anybody else in your organization? Can you afford somebody else in your organization as a startup? And even if there is somebody else, you as an entrepreneur need to know everything about your business. So manufacture, transport, service, market, support, product, services, customer sales, all it is. Renting, accounting, IT, all those stuff, all the boring stuff which we talk about doing business. Okay, insurance, the day-to-day -day nitty gritty. And you as an entrepreneur need to know the details. You need to pay attention to your details can't be like forest, okay? Forgets to wear his trousers to the office, okay? Or you forget to pay your electricity bill. Oops. Internet. Yeah? So somebody needs to do that stuff. And who's that somebody? It's you, it's your business. You're the entrepreneur, okay? So you need to do that, and as they say, the devil is in the detail. Every small part of the business has to be taken care of. 
all right? And you as an entrepreneur should know every aspect of it. I mean, I look at entrepreneurs, and I, 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 and I saw them firsthand, I'm sure you guys must have known. Pre-computer, these guys knew had the figures in their head. Pre -cal during calculator days, I was struggling with a calculator, and I, I seen people look at this and do this thing mentally. So these guys knew the details. If it's trading, they knew where the stock stuff is kept. If there was customer, they know this customer is going to buy so much at this color. It's about payment. They will know who this pay will. This guy will pay. This guy will not pay. So, and for all of these tasks, you need to again allocate resources. What do you need with those? What do you need to do in those tasks? Okay. This brings me to a to the final points about the how to execute, the art of execution. So remember the MAT, Milestone Assumption Tasks. And this is the final sort of points which are there, which I put up. Communication, communication. There's no such thing as over communication in an entrepreneur business, I feel. It's better to talk and let people know what you all want to achieve than remain silent. Assume that people know what you want to achieve. Measure. What you don't measure will never get done. Measure, measure, measure. Okay, and be fanatical about measuring. You need to measure. Okay, if it takes you more than 20 seconds to find out in your organization who's going to be doing something, there is a problem. So you should know in your organization who's accountable for what. All right, this is HR, this is basic. Whoever does good work, reward and reward immediately and reward instantly and don't wait for it. And reward can be Monetary, but it also can be non-monetary. Okay, follow up, follow up, follow up till it, the matter dies or it is sorted out. Basic execution thing, follow up. Ask it again and again, to the point of getting people irritated. Yeah, but it's got to be done. Somebody needs to do it, so follow up. Don't assume they'll be done. Who's on Matrix? Raise of hands, who saw the movie Matrix? Remember Morpheus? What is Morpheus? Remember the red pill and the other pill, yeah? Remember Morpheus, what did Morpheus say? Don't ignore him. There's always good to have in your setup somebody who's bringing you down to reality. Not necessarily somebody who's negative, somebody who's totally pu putting holes all the time in your theory. Not that, but somebody who's, got, who's been there, done that. Some sort of experience, person who's gone through the grind. So don't ignore him. Or that, the, the concept of the Morpheus. Morpheus is obviously Greek mythology. Uh, I think from the Lord of the Dreams or something. So don't do that. Okay? It's, it's very important to have that around you. Somebody who's there. Apparently Julius Caesar had a guy walking behind him whispering in his ear that you're only human all the time. To bring him down to reality. So it's always good to have that dose of reality in your business. And culture of execution. The culture of to-do attitude. We have to get things done. Okay, no excuses. No tomorrow. No maybes. So the whole culture in the organization which you are trying to build is to do, to execute, execute, execute. All right, so these are the things which I put up here as, as a guideline for you to make up your business plan. And I think these have been tried and tested. Uh, they come from some very good sources, which I have found out. And I can validate it by some of the work which I have been doing in my own business. It does make sense. Uh, so thank you very much for your time. I'm willing to take any questions if you have. Yeah, look, the, I, as I told you, it is something which has always been debatable. It's a lot of debate now, especially in the healthcare industry. Now, I'll give an example which I can think of right now at the top of the mind. You know the health bands nowadays? The ones which Nike has come out with and, and, and a lot of Fitbit has come out with, the ones which you wear around, that, that thing is going through a lot of a serious technological challenge there. And I think the, this is only my guess, but what I've been reading here is that watch out for Apple, this is going to be the one which is coming out. And now they moved away from what Nike is doing to even getting your whole biomed done thing done here. So you know, you just wear that belt and you get your blood and you get your cholesterol, you get, I mean, this is where it's going. Now, in, those, in really high-tech industries, 
you know, you need to have somewhere and the, 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 the school of thought is launch an IT to it. At least you're there. I understand your point. I'm not saying you don't research it. You get an idea one morning and next morning you go and launch a product. I'm not saying don't do your due diligence. The point is where and perfection is such a relative thing. What is perfect for me is lousy for you. So where do you reach perfection? So it's just a school of thought. That sell, iterate, sell, iterate. 10 hours or 12 hours or 14 hours of work which I do. Um, yes, I like, enjoy my work, but there are certain tasks which I don't like doing. Uh, does it mean that I don't do them? No, I have to still do them. So it's always, I think, the big picture. You just keep the big picture. I mean, why are you doing that small thing which is boring? It's part of your bigger picture of being an entrepreneur, being successful, launching a product, whatever you're thinking about. being. A, so that's one way of doing it. Uh, love for your work is a pretty, pretty good uh, motivator. I don't want to use money. I don't think money. Uh, it drives everything, but I don't think we should really uh, say everything should be motivated only by money. Money is one other factor. I think money is a process, of course, of doing something. Uh, just a final point: the two, the two courses, uh, the two sources that I've used is a guy, book by uh, the Art of Startup by Guy Kawasaki. It's also in the presentation. I referenced it. Uh, it's another one, an article which I came across in Harvard Business Review. Uh, that's also been referenced here. You can do your own uh, own uh, research. You can. That could just be the starting point for you to go ahead and do a whole, a whole lot of stuff there. There's a whole lot of stuff which you can go into. Uh, but then that is only theory. Don't forget, it's the execution. Duh. Right? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you, Mr.